Hi, I'm Hillsborough Mayor Steve Calloway, and thank you for joining us for Community Conversations. This is a special edition of Community Conversations, one that is years in the making. And that's because we have some of our city councilors with us who have served, I think we've served a collective 36 years, you know, on council. And this is our last, um, this is our last year together. Um, and so while uh, we, you know, recently had the election, which brings in, you know, um, new folks, you know, some of us are termed out, uh, you know, Gina, you, you opted to, you know, to stick with one term. And so, you know, we're glad that, you know, we're gathered here just to have a, an informal conversation of looking back, you know, looking ahead. And um, Jeannie, you've been on council for four years. Um, Anthony on council for eight, our current council president. Rick, you were appointed um, partway into a term and then ran for two full terms. So you've been on council for 10 years. And, um, and so it has been a privilege to be with all of you, you know, during my time on council and as mayor. And, um, you know, so the, the first question, you know, as you think about your time on city council, what moments stand out to you? Um, what what things will stick with you for years to come? And, Gino, I'll start with you. Oh, in regards to moments that stick out, I've always been very appreciative of any opportunity to go and speak to groups within the mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. when you're invited whether it's with the youth, whether it's um, with the women's group or anyone else to really kind of be face to face mm -hmm. with folks out in the community. Granted, um, you know, I also have an opportunity like when I'm out and about mm -hmm. being able to introduce myself if I have a question about something that's been going on uh, and people really appreciate that, but it just reminds me of the capacity that I'm in to, to serve and hear voices. And so I think that's been what stands out for me. Nice. I think I, I, I remember so much, but I think about like the fun times when we adopted the B-City USA and we wore little antennas and we got homemade <laughs> honey. It was, or, uh, you know, the serious times like the COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> Had upended our lives, our our structures around us, and also the the really meaningful policy times, the times where you know we voted to make sure that we you know uh, become a sanctuary city. Mm -hmm. That really does stand out to me. Mm -hmm. But I think there's one story I wanted to share that I do really love. Is um, so in November of 20, uh, 2019, it was about four months after my daughter was born. Uh, my wife had to go to the hospital; she was kind of sick. So I brought my daughter with me to transportation committee. I was chair at the time and uh, we ended up having to do a recess so I could change my daughter's diaper. Uh, the staff member said he, he believed that was a historic first. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was a first in the city. So I take her to a separate room. I go and as I kneel down to start changing her diaper, my pants rip from the top of my pants all the way down to my knee. So then I change her, I bring her back in, I actually have to go around, like kind of shimmy across the, the <laughs> wall to get to my coat. Um, and it was just, um, I think I'll always remember because there's a picture that uh, now uh, upcoming mayor uh, Pace uh, took of me that I really do love of me and my daughter. And then actually it ended up that Robbie, our city manager, ended up rocking her to sleep Aww. for the rest of that meeting. I just think about all of the chaos, the hecticness, how awesome mm -hmm. staff were, that we were still able to make policy decisions. And that I got to share such a, you know, silly and chaotic moment with my daughter and everyone here. Nice. And you're, when you started on council, you yeah. didn't have children. Did not. I, now, was, now, I, I was engaged with no yeah. children, and now I have a daughter who is in kindergarten. Wow. Yeah. wow. <laughs> and a wife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Well, Rick, what about well, you? Well, I have some of the same memories um, or same moments. Um, certainly interacting with the YAC group uh, mm -hmm. was fun and, and the civic uh, leadership mm -hmm. group. Um, uh, some of the key policy decisions that we made mm -hmm. uh, come to mind. Um, and you know the debate that we have around those is both civil um, and mm -hmm. um, informative um, interaction with uh, the mayor and um, council and the city management team, uh, all of those things, uh, we're, we're just so lucky yeah. as a city 
to be in the circumstances we are. And you know, I also want to mention that it, it's. It, I just want to thank the residents for uh, the opportunity to serve, the privilege that I've enjoyed being on council. Uh, it's meant a lot to me. I've learned so much. Mm -hmm. I've learned so much from my fellow councilors and the mayor, uh, as well as the city management team and staff. Um, we're lucky. We're just mm -hmm. very lucky to live in such a diverse and welcoming community, and I'm so proud to be here. You know, Rick, you mentioned, you know, just the privilege and honor of serving. And I heard somebody say once that when we run for office, it's because we have had an internal calling. Mm -hmm. But when we serve, it's because we have been externally called. Mm -hmm. And that external calling from our voters for all of our residents, um, you know, the trust that is, you know, given to us um, is amazing. And I think of, you know, my eight years as mayor, you know, as you mentioned, the pandemic and, oh. you know, the, um, you know, economic meltdowns. We had, you know, the, the George Floyd murder, you know, back in Minnesota. And then, you know, just the, the response to that throughout the nation. You know, there's been a lot of things that we have dealt with, including, you know, the fire, mm -hmm. you know, in, in downtown. Um, but what I have appreciated is that while our public held us accountable, they also held us up. And, you know, I, you know, and I, as I think about what moments, you know, sometimes it's the random moment of somebody I don't know just saying, you're doing a great job, you know, th thank you. Mm -hmm. And, and I know that's not, you know, it is shared with me, but it really is reflective of all of us as counsel. And, uh, you know, and, and sometimes those words of affirmation and support have come at the most opportune times. It's that little push. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I think it's always a good reminder for me to make sure that I'm doing for others, you know, what was done, you know, for us. And I think, you know, the other thing is um, being out in the state or in other parts of the country yeah. and have people recognize us. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, now, so you see a yak person recognize you. Okay, that's that's predictable. Mm -hmm. But you know, strangers, you know, on planes, you know, you end up sitting next to somebody who's from you know Hillborough, okay, or somebody that has a relative that moved here. Um, I think probably the most poignant and profound one was when we were at the National League of Cities conference in Kansas City, and. Um, there was somebody who was looking for a place to sit and we had, you know, some pl a couple of open seats. So I invited him and he looked at my name tag and he said, oh, you know, Hillsborough, Oregon. And I said, yes. And he said, when I was a boy, I picked I picked it in the fields and his family lived in the panhandle of Texas and would pick in the cotton fields and then go through the southwest and pick in the fields mm -hmm. there all the way up to the fields here, he lived in Camp Lasul, and then they would go up, you know, the, up the valley and pick apples. And um, we've stayed in touch. And I mean, he is, um, yeah, he's, so he's, he's an elected official. And I, I um, he was a business owner. He had a sister who was a uh, superintendent or a principal. I mean, a very accomplished family. He sent me pictures of him as a little boy, you oh, know, wow. in the fields, and you see, you know, his his migrant, his little migrant, yeah. you know, um, you know, living you know, quarters behind him. And it's like, wow. I mean, again, it is a small world and we're so fortunate to be part. So mm -hmm. I, I, and I know I went on, there's a lot <laughs> of those special stories. Um, so accomplishments, you know, um, you know, what, what are the accomplishments that you're, you know, really proud of um, to have been a part of? Yeah. Oh. This was one that was really, I, I, I love this question because there are so many different answers. I think uh, some that always come to my mind are the fact that we have citywide composting. Mm -hmm. That was a choice. That was something we, we pushed forward. The fact that we have Highlight, our mm -hmm. gigabit internet service, mm -hmm. and it serves a lot of our residents. Uh, it's, it's something that I had been passionate about before serving on council. Mm -hmm. It was great to see that the city had started before I got here. It was one of those that was a great place to, to have the ability to help move it forward. Mm -hmm. something that is an absolute necessity yeah. you know I also really do I, I am very 
uh, proud of how we spent our federal ARPA money mm -hmm. uh, after the um, after the COVID-19 pandemic, making sure that we were community focused, community centered and and really using our dollars wisely, looking not just today, but into the future in so many different ways. Another small one, too, is all of the city electricity is 100 mm -hmm. percent renewable. Mm -hmm. I really love that. That's those are you know, I want to point out that you were also behind a tree city designation mm -hmm. and the B city mm -hmm. pollinator. Mm -hmm. um, so th those are all um, accomplishments that you can point to, mm -hmm. I think, as, as a, a... Oh, absolutely. And, and there's so much more, yeah. So uh, yeah. I, I think of mostly economic development and land use and transportation, which I think I've been able to contribute more in that area. Yeah. Um, so I think of South Hills, where I think of North Hills, where I think of the revitalization of downtown. Yeah. I think of our incredible park system, including the new Hops Stadium and, of course, the inclusive playground and uh, Hidden Creek. And I guess I'm more in terms of the capital improvements that we've made. But um, yeah, over the 10 years, it's just remarkable mm -hmm. how much arts and culture. Um, it, there, there's so many things to point to that, we're, that we should be so proud of the new parks in South mm -hmm. Hillsboro. Um, the, the housing that's planned for Witch Hazel South, um, uh, the infrastructure that we've created, uh, all of that stuff is um, mm -hmm. just, I mean, I, it blows me away. Uh, regulated affordable housing. I mean, I, I don't want to, I'll leave something for Gina. What, Gina, what, what did I miss? You haven't hit it yet. You haven't hit it yet. Um, it's so funny. It's, uh, I, time after time, I realize how much of a bigger picture person I am when it comes to really thinking about things. But my accomplishment that, the accomplishment that will stick with me is really observing the money management mm -hmm. of Hillsborough. Um, you know, being at conferences and listening to other cities, larger, smaller, who really struggled mm -hmm. through the pandemic. Yeah. And, and I feel like our money management um, and, the, and our team really have done such a great job. I was on finance committee, you know, had to learn a lot and it was great. But just to listen to their way of thinking and thinking forward, mm -hmm. you know, long term, not just short term. And to know that we were in a pretty good place compared to a lot of our neighbors mm -hmm. during that time. And so I think that's definitely one. And also, obviously, my campaign launched right as everything was locking <laughs> down. Right. And so uh, I had to pivot my campaign during that time. And and I don't mind, you know, change and that sort of a thing. But wow. uh, to watch to watch how people took into consideration and really took a hard look at their systems mm -hmm. in order to meet the needs of our community during that time. Mm -hmm. And I really felt like coming out of it that we did take the lessons that we learned, maybe not all of them, mm -hmm. but a good chunk of them mm -hmm. and moved it forward to make it more institutionalized mm -hmm. so we could continue serving people um, in a more meaningful way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one thing I want to point out that maybe residents don't understand or realize <laughs> is how forward thinking the city is. Mm -hmm. yeah. We did some strategic planning that the, yeah. there was, uh, you know, the city management drove our strategic plan. It tells future mm -hmm. councils and, and teams, mm -hmm. what we value, how we go about things. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's kind of building the infrastructure of our city mm -hmm. in a way that people mm -hmm. don't really get to see, mm -hmm. but we're, we're, we see it and we see it in our DEI efforts. We see it in um, you know, the, the, the way we go about um, uh, Equity and contracting is yeah, a great I'll, example of there, that. There's too. so many things that that we've accomplished, over, and you know the, the the DEI work, the diversity, equity, inclusion work, is essential for Hillsborough. We're 42 percent non-white now, mm -hmm. and and that 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 community is growing. So we really need to pay attention mm -hmm. to those things, and so mm -hmm. that's uh, that's one thing. Another thing we're, we should all be proud of. Yeah. So you know, and when you talk about money management, and I think of resource management as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think back to the fire that we had. And, you know, for hours, water was being pumped, you know, on that building. And because the water department had gone through and 
you know, done the schematics and an updated schematic, then the fire department could plug in to different hydrants around the area and never draw water pressure because they were drawing through the same system yep. or the same pipes. And so it meant that, you know, the firefighters are amazing, okay? And, but, you know, the water department helped with that because yeah. of their pre-planning, you know? Right. And, um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure too, wasn't the parks department helpful yes. in yes. making sure that the parks. water didn't freeze on Correct. the ground? Park, because it was January, yeah. first of January, or first week of January, parks was putting down the icer. We had our public works there to keep, you know, the gutters clean because there was debris, but they were making sure that water could still flow. So you didn't have flooding in downtown. And I mean, it was, um, you know, and I, and I think in some ways we saw in a very local microcosm, what we also dealt with, you know, in the pandemic, you know, where you don't create partnerships during an emergency or a crisis, but you lean on those relationships and partnerships mm -hmm. you already had. And, you know, and, and because we have been good money managers, um, and because we used our ARPA dollars in, I think, ways that truly served our community and reflected the values and priorities of our council. Um, you know, when we started shut down and I said to Robbie, you know, the majority of American families could not come up with $500 for an unexpected emergency, whether it's medical or a car or whatever it might be. So we need to get ready to hand out $500 checks to families. And, you know, he said, well, the auditor would probably, you know, have some <laughs> okay. concerns about that. But, you know, um, you know, we were, if not the first, among the very first, but I think we we're the first one in Washington County, you know, to get checks out, you know, for our businesses, for low income, for rental assistance, for utilities, for food. Um, and, you know, and it was millions of dollars and we did multiple rounds of that. Yeah. And so it wasn't the one and done. You know, our city came back time and time and time again. And um, we couldn't have done it, you know, without community action. We couldn't have done it, no. you know, without so we many of our partners. partners. Yep. Yeah. And um, the chamber. And like, oh, thank you. Like, yeah, I remember the chamber the, for sure. The, the community, community foundation. foundation. Yeah. Yes. I mean, they raised and, millions yep. of dollars. For and, right. You know, and Rick, when you talked before about how we're lucky and I think we were fortunate. I think we create our oh, own sure. luck, yeah. you know? Um, and, 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 I, and I think that, um, you know, one of the things is that, you know, we look big picture, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, and I think it's also heart before ego, you know? So we're here for the good of the, gr the greater good. Um, you know, and now I'm gonna also go back and say one of the things I'm, I'm proudest of, and it goes back to my time, and, and I think you were on council when we did it too, Rick, but that's when we started Future Connect. Yeah. You know, because, you know, you know, our background in education yeah. and, you know, we always say to kids, hey, stay one. in school, get good grades, you can go to college. And deep down inside, I always knew that that wasn't necessarily true. Mm -hmm. But now with Future Connect, 50 kids 50 graduating seniors every year can go to PCC. You know, their tuition's paid for, their books, their fees, they have coaches and cohorts. And I really feel like in that way, we are honoring the kids and their effort and we're following through on that promise that yeah. we made to kids. And I think the other thing that I'm really proud about that is, you know, Seven, well, 30% of our school population lives outside of our city limits. And yet, if you're in a Hillsborough school, you are eligible. You don't have to have a Hillsborough city address. And, you know, one of, and, you know, the schools where I was principal were, you know, all outside of our city limits. And um, I remember when one of my former elementary kids, you know, got a future connect, well, you know, several of them, but one of them, you know, was still attending Century, you know, on an inter-district right. transfer, but he lived in Beaverton, but because he was still one of our kids, <laughs> was still eligible, you know, you know I, and I think just of, really I, proud. I think of that, and I think of the economic opportunity that we've been able to afford citizens, and not, you know, a lot of that's um, not the city, but um, there are opportunities at every level yeah. to make a living, to even without um, a formal four year or mm -hmm. you know degree or, or even postgraduate work or whatever. Um, 
it's there for it's mm -hmm. there for our citizens, and that's uh, that's something that keeps our you know future generations yeah. uh, with opportunity. Yeah. yeah. You know, one of the other things I guess is a two part pride, and that is that we brought you know we brought the hops here, but then we're able to keep the hops, yeah, yeah. and and you know. So much credit goes to the ownership of that group. Um, I'm really proud that we have received consistently recognition from different, you know, yeah. you know, media sources or whatnot, sure. you know, as you know, one of the best places in the in the country to live, right. and um, you know. I'm really proud of us for Absolutely. that. And I also am proud that for, you know, time after time after time, we pass our local option. Yeah. Most recently, the last two times with over 80%. Yeah. And that shows how much people see how the importance of our fire department, our police department, parks. our parks. Yeah. And um, so in that regard, our voters deserve all the credit for that yeah. because our quality of life is reflected in their priorities, you know, as well. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're talking yeah. about all of our accomplishments. Um, I want to take a, just a pivot for a moment and um, share how much I've appreciated being uh, a part of the council. And you know, <laughs> for those who don't know, Anthony Martin has always had a deep dive into every <laughs> yeah. single decision we've made and as an analyst by, you know, profession. And uh, so I'm going to miss that analytical mind because it, it, it made my job a lot easier because he's mm -hmm. he's already done the, done the work. <laughs> yeah, he's done the work. So um, so I want to point that out because this is Anthony's <laughs> last year, too. But he's been a tremendous resource to council um, and, and Gina, yeah. her background in education and uh, her perspective as uh, a Latina um, uh, has uh, also, and, and more, th I think, thoughtful and big picture. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That, I mean, <laughs> you're down in the weeds. You're, <laughs> I, you're at 30,000 feet and, and looking at the, the big picture. Genuinely love that yeah. as well. Yeah. I really appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for the mayor, of course, uh, this is gonna be really hard because you have contributed so much and obviously, you're getting a lot of recognition for that, which is well deserved. Well deserved. Um, but uh, boy, you know, to uh, it, your knowledge, your relationships, your uh, uh, tenure on council and as mayor, uh, the empathy that you show, uh, the uh, respect and the humor you bring to the position, we're going to miss that. We're going to miss that as a city. And I just want to make sure that you know how much we've appreciated it being on council. But, the, <laughs> but now here's, and, and yes, for all of that. But the wonderful thing is we've had great councils and great mayors before. And we are, are we have another, yeah. great and another great 100%. council. And I think, you know, that's where we are fortunate oh, that we just continue to have a, a deep bench of people who care about our city. And, you know, I think, Rick, you and I first met years and years ago with 2020. Yeah. Okay. Gina, you and I met in Hillsborough School District. Anthony, we met, you know, through yeah. city council. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, what I love is the diversity of where all of these relationships started. And yet they all, you know, converge here. And I think that's been one of the things. We have big picture. We have down in the weeds. You know, mm -hmm. I think of, you know, when we were doing uh, Block 67 and I was trying to remember what was the subsidy that Project Up, you know, oh, yeah. was was wanting. And, you know, and. You, you had it. I mean, you I mean, remembered yeah. that. Yes. So you're my long term memory. And, um, <laughs> you know, and and so it's it's not just institutional knowledge, but it's that quick recall, yeah. you know, as well. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, other things that I know we're proud of is our partnerships with our school district, you know, which we haven't even scratched the surface of, mm -hmm. you know, um, our entrepreneurship programs for, you know, we, we talk Cosa about our procurement, Nemo's but okay. Costa Nemo's, absolutely. Yeah. You know, our um, commitment to providing affordable housing and not just quality land in great locations, you know, with Nueva Esperanza, but with Habitat for Humanity, where people are able to, you know, begin to create that generational wealth. I mean, it goes on and on and on. And I, I, thinking about that, I remember, yeah. you know, one of the first pro 
I'm not sure if it was Hillsborough's first project, but I remember one of the first was over at 185th and Baseline. Mm -hmm. And we we provided a little subsidy there and just seeing where we went. We were there and now we have, you know, all these projects we've mm -hmm. been working on, partnering with tons of people. It's just so, yeah, seeing yeah. that growth has been fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And then again, having kids come. I mean, one we've had, you know, choirs sing, one we've had scout troops come and lead the Pledge of mm -hmm. Allegiance. Mm -hmm. um, some who were prepared to do it and others who just called called up <laughs> three minutes before council. You know, um, and you know, and I also am proud of the even when we had um contentious issues, there was still for the most part good civility. Oh sure. And and contentious issues did not become divisive issues. Yeah. Okay, because when things were done, we came back together. And that's part of the Hillsborough way. And, and I think the civility that oops, that we all as a council extended to each other, um, you know, we model that and we have received that. Not 100 percent, but, you know, um, everyone's human. <laughs> but everyone's human, including us yeah. on council as well. You know, and, um, I think because of prior councils mm -hmm. and, and management of the city that you referred to that was really very important in laying the, mm -hmm. you know, the ground for, for where we are today. I look for the future council, yeah. uh, that cohort that was just elected, yeah. I have a, a real confidence in their ability to uh, continue the work that we started. Um, but I also know there are, you know, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> it, uh, it, we, we have some serious challenges yeah. with respect to affordable housing and, you know, I, and solving the homeless issue and the, mm -hmm. and the, and the services around that community. Um, uh, we have uh, fiscal challenges because of the cost of uh, everything mm -hmm. going up so much. So the new council is gonna have, um, you know, a, a fair amount to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, challenges, maybe even, uh, who knows, you know, because we, n nobody knows what lies right. ahead, but um, certainly the climate is changing literally and we need to be more resilient. We have a new federal administration mm -hmm. that might portend changes. So um, I'm just curious about um, the future and I think we're well prepared. But uh, I also. Uh, so, Rick, then what words of wisdom or what advice might you share, oh, you know, with, well, you know, maybe not just the incoming, but future counselors as well? Uh, I, you know, I hope um, that we retain the ability to communicate, come to consensus in a civil manner, uh, have thoughtful policy discussions listen to our community, to what they want, um, uh, try to adapt to whatever is thrown at them. We, we, had, we had no idea that COVID was gonna come along during our 10 years, which was very challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know what that challenge will be, but I'm certain it's there <laughs> in one way or another. Mm -hmm. So I would hope that uh, they can work together, they can be frank with each other, um, they can be honest with each other, uh, honest with our in, uh, interactions with our um, city uh, management team and staff mm -hmm. in terms of, um, you know, everything from fiscal management to uh, new initiatives to, mm -hmm. you know, capital projects, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, so that they reflect what our community wants. Mm -hmm. so yeah. That's what my hope for them. Yeah, yeah. good. You know what? I, I know for me, I think one of the key things that really, you know, stuck with me throughout serving is, you know, we have this community we have because everyone has put in more than they've gotten out. Mm. And I think that serving and being on council is a is a tangible way to do that. There's a lot of ways to do it, to be clear, all of our community contributes and making sure that everyone knows that that is a critical piece. You know, we build up everything. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, the other piece is not just to the uh, uh, newly elected officials, but anyone considering it is you belong in this space. You know, everybody belongs in this space. Mm -hmm. We in Hillsborough have tried really hard to build 
build a big table so folks can be here, feel welcome, included, not just that there's a seat, but that you have the ability to make change. Mm -hmm. And then the other piece too, which I think the folks having just run campaigns know, but you need a support system. It's really critical. This is a very, mm -hmm. very rewarding work and it is also a sacrifice and you need to have folks that you can rely on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's a key component. And mm -hmm. the other piece I would say too is, if anyone wants to reach out, if anybody who's on council is more than willing to talk about our experiences. And any of us, I'm sure, would be happy to talk about, you know, what we can share of our, our experience and insights and mm -hmm. all of it. Mm -hmm. I've yes. been very gratified that the future councilors have been coming to meetings, yeah. have been meeting with us individually to understand better how the city works, you know, what's ahead, yeah. what we're working on so that we don't drop the ball, that we don't um, you know, take a step back somehow, uh, because this was a big cohort to replace, I think. It's a, probably the, the highest number of counselors we've ever had to turn over an election, I think. Yeah, we will have, you know, once they fill, you know, you know Mayor like Pace's position, we will have five members of council who are either new to council or in a new position. Right. So that is a huge. Uh, it, it is. It is. Yeah. yeah. And that's a challenge in and of itself. And not that those people aren't up to it. Yeah. It's just that, yeah. you know, that's a that's a big change. It is. So, yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, which in some ways is good because they're starting together, yeah. you know. And so, you know, and, and maybe um, uh, that breaks down some of mm -hmm. the um, the barriers because right. we all need each other, yeah. you know, in that way. I was just gonna take it from the perspective of if you're considering running. I mean, cause this for me stemmed from, I actually had taken a year off of work for mm -hmm. family reasons. And I remember having coffee with you and saying, hey, I'm taking the year off, put me in coach, where do you need me? Mm -hmm. And you literally looked at me like, oh my gosh, are you serious? <laughs> you know, and so, um, and it wasn't until later when someone had asked, have you ever thought about running for an elected op? No, mm -hmm. I have not. <laughs> but, you know, looking into it and into the and into what it entailed, um, I think it was, you know, it's a system that's kind of hard to fit for everybody mm -hmm. as far as schedules and family needs and things mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah, the support is very important. Um, and so I think I just encourage those who are maybe are at a point in their life that they can afford the time and, mm -hmm. you know, and space in order to do it, um, knowing that a lot of us are willing to support because that's mm -hmm. how I felt supported mm -hmm. in moving forward with deciding to run, right? Mm -hmm. Is to to know that, yep, I could contribute. No, none of you are experts mm -hmm. in everything that we mm -hmm. deal with. Those are mm -hmm. things that we learn about and um, have discussions about. And so as long as you're open to listening to all those different perspectives, because I think people were surprised that I didn't come in with a specific agenda necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, I'm just here to help and contribute, mm -hmm. you know? And so, but if you've had that feeling for a while, like, I think I could do this, mm -hmm. then ask and reach out because you can. Mm -hmm. And so um, hopefully by pulling others up, mm -hmm. you know, it'll continue to have that feel of, diverse perspectives within mm -hmm. our council, um, mm -hmm. you know, moving forward, so. And, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, the, the infrastructure of our city with, with Highlight, you know, with the water pipes and different things. Yeah. Um, and I think what I would encourage the incoming council to pay attention to is also the social infrastructure, mm -hmm. because um, I know is, you know, experiencing two different presidential administrations during my mayorship and three presidential administrations, you know, during my time on council, um, there were different needs, different anxieties diff that we felt. And what we feel about the national, you know, comes down locally. And, um, you know, during so many of the things that we didn't expect, you know, that we've mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, that social infrastructure that reassurance that we got from each other, that leaning into each other so that we, uh, I mean, I think about during the pandemic, how people gathered in the evenings up front with little bonfires, you know, or little campfires, whatever, you know, um, 
and that became then part of that network of trust mm -hmm. and, you know, critically important. And so as we grow and, you know, 110,000 and over 40 percent people of color, you know, making sure that social infrastructure is in place is critical. Absolutely. And the other thing is, you know, because my first involvement with Hillsborough was through 2020 and, you know, in 2020, the Plan. The original 2020 yeah. vision, and, yeah. I'm sorry, vision and impl implementation, yes. And then now we're at 2035. And I would encourage the incoming council to remember that 2035 is our community's Bible, so to speak. It is our vision. Yeah. And what we do as a council, our priorities and values need to support that and reflect that and not be different, yeah. you know, than what our community has said we want in our 2020 vision and action plan and also Hillsborough. You know, um, one thing I want to point out is that um, serving on council means you can, it, the closer you are, and this is my view, the closer you are to the people you serve, the, the yeah. more trust you have mm -hmm. and the better you, you, you understand their needs. Mm -hmm. And so serving on a local mm -hmm. council uh, or maybe countywide or, or citywide. Um, I think those are the most trusted people with the most impact on people's lives. And we, we, to some degree, we control our own destiny. Mm -hmm. So when, when you're at the state or federal level, things are much different. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's another reason to serve, another reason to expect a lot of your counsel. Mm -hmm. Well, and yeah, I think we see the surveys about job satisfaction and trust and the farther mm -hmm. away you get from the local you know it's diminishing returns it oh, yeah. yeah it does it does and uh, mm -hmm. and I think you know you've heard me use the saying that you can pretend to care but you can't pretend to show up mm -hmm. and as a council <laughs> we show up yeah. you know and and um, and that matters mm -hmm. you know and that's then helps us make better decisions. Yeah. Um, if, if you were continuing on council, if we didn't have term limits, <laughs> or if you had you know, um, the opportunity to continue, what would you look forward to working on? Well, I, I, I was on the bus rapid transit task force mm -hmm. that um, for TB Highway um, to create um, more transit opportunity mm -hmm. and better serve customers using that, um, that line. And I, it's a big, heavy lift. Mm -hmm. um, I hope it comes to fruition, but that was one thing that I was pretty invested in because mm -hmm. um, I served for almost 10, I think 10 years, all my 10 years on, on transportation. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, so, um, so that's one thing that I would point out. Um, I think housing is a big, mm. big is. issue. And uh, so whatever we can do, it, it's not, a, it's a very complex problem, but we have a stake in mm -hmm. this, yeah. solving that puzzle mm -hmm. in terms of providing housing for every economic, uh, you know, cohort in our city. And uh, that, that's, that's going to remain challenging. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to, I, I would like to work on that, continue to work on that. Absolutely. Good. Um, going back to my systems, I, actually the continuing the work and the conversation around equity yeah. uh, and seeing that I know work has started with staff, you know, we've been involved in some of that work and we're starting to see decision making processes that are starting to include that lens and that perspective mm -hmm. um, to the point that, you know, you come to work for Hillsborough, you're here in Hillsborough, just know this is how we make decisions. Mm -hmm. Uh, and to really continue to institutionalize that with with things that we do that is just mm -hmm. practice and, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have to be highlighted separately, mm -hmm. right? It's that's just how who we are and how mm -hmm. we function, mm -hmm. um, especially with all of the opportunity of the changing demographics of Hillsboro. And um, because the other thing I wish we could do um, but this is just a wish list kind of a thing, <laughs> is I feel like not enough locally, we really celebrate the history of mm -hmm. the diversity of, you know, we've got some families who have been here since I don't know when, mm -hmm. and they were non-white families that contributed so much mm -hmm. to the beginning of, of all of this. And, and this area and this region, and we've got these very authentic and, just powerful histories mm -hmm. uh, within those families 
that are here in this, you know, in Hillsboro and just, you know, as our neighbors surrounding us, because they contribute as well. I think a lot of people come into Hillsboro and they enjoy what we have here. Um, and they, they take some of those ideas back to where they live as well. So, uh, and vice versa, mm -hmm. you know, and so, yeah, I would continue with, with that work um, of both acknowledging the history that's already here um, and moving forward with those systemic ways of making decisions mm -hmm. with that ingrained um, in it. So, yeah, everything else as far as the growth of, of Hillsboro, there's so many different layers to it that I, people, people don't realize um, trying to look forward into the future and anticipate things. Um, you know, cause it's not just things on a whim, Great. you no. know, it's, it's definitely things. It's not something we just keep kicking down the road. Mm -hmm. There's plans, a plans, yeah. B plans, you know, depending on mm -hmm. the growth of the city and what's feasible. And I'm going to dovetail off of your comment. Um, you know, I would love to continue, um, to work on our, um, you know, inclusiveness yeah. and, and engagement. Yeah. You know, we are the first council that had bilingual business cards. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. and that reflected our priorities as individual candidates, but then how we wanted to serve. We have Cresci and Juntos that we didn't have before. And we have, um, you know, the outreach that we've done with Calle Diaz. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so, and in so many other ways. And, you know, the one thing that I wish we could have accomplished um, on our council, but pandemic, you know, interrupted a lot. And that was to have a sister city, create a sister city relationship with the city in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because, um, and I'm so proud of our, you know, now getting close to 40 years, I think we're 36 years with Fukuroi in Japan. And that is really important. But I remember um, when we had Jalisco and Hillsboro, you know, a um, mariachi and dance group that came from Jalisco. And uh, there was a woman there who uh, was in her 60s and she just had tears. It's quite tear streaming. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was so moving. It was the, f she had never been back mm -hmm. to Jalisco. Jalisco says she moved here. And so this was a connection to her city and, and just realizing how important that cross connection is to those who live here, but it is for us to understand and appreciate and how honoring and affirming and welcoming all of those things, yeah. you know, you know, I, I think be. most residents don't realize that we have over 60 languages spoken yeah. in our city <laughs> and the diversity extends to people from India mm -hmm. originally and Asia and all over the globe. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, Africa, we have a really interesting mix mm -hmm. of people that are contributing to mm -hmm. our uh, city yeah. uh, as residents. So it's, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's amazing. And, you know, I think the other thing that I would, you know, continue to work on, encourage, you know, that may Maybe those two things kind of go hand in hand. But, you know, as we hear at the federal level and Rick, you talked about new administration coming in and who knows what that portends. But, you know, you have Elon Musk saying he can cut two trillion out of a six trillion dollar budget. and We won't notice it. Well, we will. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, not knowing what um, diminished funds will come from the federal government down to the local level, recognizing that the SHS you know, bond, you know, and yeah, levy with Metro for supportive housing services, you know, to, to support our homelessness, um, you know, issues. Um, that has a sunset on it. Um, you know, recognizing that, you know, our state budget, uh, as we've seen throughout the economy nationally, that is gonna have an impact. Yep. And so, and we're seeing increased PERS rates and any number of things. And I think that's one of the really important things is to, you know, again, continue to fiscally be conservative, um, you know, support our social infrastructure with our community service grants and those kinds of mm -hmm. things. Um, but we're gonna have to be, we, you know, council, incoming council is gonna have to be very careful, you know, as they, as they look at that. Uh, 
I, I think of that too. You kind of uh, kind of slipped and said it. I mean, yeah. we're still all going to be here, and we'll be helping make you know helping make the city good. And yeah. what I would love, and I will say, I love term limits. It's a bummer it happens, <laughs> uh, but at the same time, they're great to make yeah. sure that we get more leaders. Yeah. And I I would love to you know keep working on sustainability is broadly, not mm -hmm. just sustainability and environmental standpoint, but social sustainability with mm -hmm. all the community events, with community outreach that you talked about, economic sustainability, making sure we have living wage jobs, mm -hmm. that we can age in this city, that we can live, work and play in this mm -hmm. city, that we support everyone zero to however old to, in, in our city, mm -hmm. making sure that we really do make a city that you know, you say it a lot and I really do love it to say that grows great things mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, making sure that we can continue working on every aspect. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, to the some folks might not realize often what we're doing is it's not that we are choosing not to do something. It's that we only can hold so many balloons mm -hmm. at a time. Yeah. And so that's the interesting part as we move forward is just seeing which uh, which balloons the next council mm -hmm. are going to be able to handle. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's prioritization. Yep. You know? mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. something things are an iterative process too and you have to be Absolutely. patient about accomplishing them but um, you know I'll tag on to your sustainability we also need to be a resilient city because yes. we're we know about climate change we know about we see it in other communities in terms of our preparedness for mm -hmm. um, the big one if yeah. it comes um, I you know, I hate to mm -hmm. even think about it, mm -hmm. but we do have to think about it's, it as a it's, council. It's so, a yeah. non insignificant chance. <laughs> no, so it's, yes, <laughs> I, yeah. So yeah. that's another, it's another big challenge. Mm -hmm. And especially, you know, it's so tempting not to think about it because it hasn't happened, you know, right. but uh, we just have to be prepared. Yeah. And uh, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure we're prepared enough. No. Yeah. So. I, I was going to say really quick, I know we're talking a lot about money here. Um, <laughs> I don't know how we got this deep into the weeds, but here we go. Um, so for, I was always very, you know, having being in education, you know, we also got federal funding for certain things. And my my cautionary tale was always like, OK, but whatever we use it on, it yeah. has to be with that mindset of this is temporary. But if we're going to mm. build something, it needs to be something that's sustainable. Right. And so coming out of the pandemic and as we knew the federal money that the cities got was going to end, that's when we really had to make decisions. Mm -hmm as to what sustains, what what's going to stick around. Because there were some things that came out of that that were like, oh, this is great. Mm -hmm. But like yeah. you said, how many balloons can we hold on to? Yeah. Yeah. And so, because I don't think we're out of the woods with that quite no. yet. No. I feel like we're on the tail end of that right now. And I think the, the stuff that is going to be decided over the handful of years is really going to mm -hmm. set the tone moving forward um, because those federal funds are gone mm -hmm. and we can't keep everything mm -hmm. um and like you said and having to refocus again on what the city's role is mm -hmm. in day-to-day -day life right. and what the county's role is what the state's role is and well, well, so clearly the expectations have changed from people they Absolutely. They, yeah. they they want the city uh, they look to the city yeah. for more of what used to be provided by the state or federal government or even county government mm -hmm. i mean in terms of um uh, mental health services and uh, substance abuse and all of those things. It feels like, and, and homelessness, I think, really drove this. Yeah. You know, it wasn't necessarily uh, ours to respond to as a jurisdiction, but we had to. We had to. And uh, yeah. Our, yeah, our community sees gaps regardless mm -hmm. of which banner, which government mm -hmm. banner it is. And they expect us, yeah. understandably, to step up to serve it regardless. And like, like somebody said to me once, it's, you know, it's not your responsibility, but it is your problem. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I thought, yeah, that's that's really, really true, because sometimes that responsibility falls in a different department right. in a different government jurisdiction. Yeah. But it is our problem. Absolutely. And uh, so, um, you know, I, I guess and in, in we, we had a, a comment that kind of broached on this before about what would we want the public to know okay and um you know so you know knowing that this is both a video as well <laughs> as a podcast because we know there are folks who listen to it you know um while they drive around or they're doing whatever um what would you what would you want the public to know that either maybe is a learning for you during your time or from your time, or maybe something that was confirmed and reaffirmed. 
I, I think a couple things, uh, you know, and I think about it from the council perspective. I'll use an I, but I do uh, I terms. But I do mm -hmm. think that the rest of council feels this way. You know, like I read all the emails we get, mm -hmm. you know, I, uh, often, you know, when responding to the email, you'll get the surprise like, oh, I didn't mm -hmm. realize people mm -hmm. read read this absolutely yeah. we read this we take into account what you're saying mm -hmm. we may not always agree with you but we definitely take into account what you say mm -hmm. i think uh, the next piece too is we are you know, can i yeah can I please jump in on that too? and not only do we read it but one of the things that i'd like the public to know is their input does change opinion absolutely. their input does change policy and it does change um you know, sometimes the conditions or the details to what we're going to do. And I know, you know, people say, oh, I come and I talk and nobody, I well, get that. So, so often but, when we hear from people that are testifying at council, it's so tempting to respond to them, yeah. you know, and have a dialogue with them. But we don't have that kind of um, ability to do that at council meetings because mm -hmm. it would who know it would be open ended sure um, and and that's that's kind of that's been frustrating for mm -hmm. counselors i think mm -hmm. but um, but uh, but we do refer them to staff and we do talk to them afterward mm -hmm. and we do respond i think mm -hmm. um, or try to uh, to their concerns so um, yeah, that's one thing i'd want people to know too yeah. is that we we do listen you know yeah. we do understand that not everybody is always on board with the decisions yeah. that yeah. we take um, sometimes it appears that we've made up our minds before, you know, but usually it's only because we've had time to discuss yeah. and time to deliberate mm -hmm. and time to uh, form our opinions and ask questions and have the information that we think we need to make the decision. Mm -hmm. So it sometimes appears that it's a done deal yeah. when there's a lot behind the scene that got us there. I yeah. actually did a video of that earlier on, I think it was the first couple of years on my um, my campaign Facebook page yeah. was like, okay, so you're not going to believe this, right? And I did a video of you go to a city council meeting, you just see us voting on a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But there was all these things that happened before we got to that point, you mm -hmm. know? And so I attempted to, to halfway try to explain, right, of what I was observing mm -hmm. um, within that process. So I can see how people could easily get you know, lost um, and not know where things um, are happening. And so I thought that was really good for, for people to know as they're trying to figure things out, especially since we're in the midst of pandemic, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, yeah, I think that, that, that sophisticated layer mm -hmm. of the process and they somehow all come back together mm -hmm during our city council meetings. Well, and you know, there's the, the accusation, the charge that we rubber stamp. And, you know, and, and I can understand why some people, why it could look that way. Mm -hmm. But like you say, what people yeah. don't understand is from the work sessions, the feedback that we've been given, because if staff is bringing things to us and we're continually voting them down, or we continually are s split down the middle, then either we as a council are not making clear what we not what we want or expect or what is something we can support, or staff is not listening to us when we're telling them, you know, mm -hmm. what we want. I mean, and so going back to council goals, even yeah. we work on those together, that informs what yeah. happens. <laughs> and so, you know, the fact that, you know, so many of our votes are um, unanimous, you know, shows that we communicate well to staff, staff is listening and communicating well, mm -hmm. you know, back to us. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, and I, uh, there was something else. That, I had one but, yeah. more quick one was, I don't think people realize these positions are part time. Oh, yeah, like, that's they're true. They're really part time. <laughs> you know, I don't look at my council email every single day, right? Yeah. I have a full time job yeah. um, and I, and I wish I could be at more yeah. ribbon cuttings mm -hmm. and I try to get to what I sure. can get to, you know, to really show support for the different events in the community. And mm -hmm. so, you know, when I post about council, you know, it's always hashtag my second job, yeah. you know? And so, um, 
it could very easily with a city our size be more hours mm -hmm. sure. you know in a well many cities many cities do have right you know, right um, and we're not yeah, and we're so not. it is it is a part-time position we, and i know we all put a lot of in different ways put a lot of time mm -hmm. into it absolutely yeah. We also rely on our uh, management team because sure. uh, we have oh a city manager form of government. Yes. And uh, one thing I want people to know is that we set the priorities, we make the policy, they implement. And mm -hmm. our current city management team is so good about allocating resources according to our priorities. Yes. I really, that happened during my tenure, mm -hmm. uh, our tenure. Uh, that didn't always happen, but when we have budget discussions, we're talking about our priorities that should reflect the, what our residents yeah. want. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why we're here. We're representing them. And the priorities that we identify are matched with resources from our city uh, mm -hmm. manager's office. And that's why we've been able to accomplish some of the things that our residents want, mm -hmm. yep. because there's that dialogue uh, yep. between mm -hmm. management and the council. Mm -hmm. The other thing I was going to say, too, is our, one thing I think is very important is that I am constantly and I know all three of you are and every other counselor as well. We are always looking at unintended consequences, good and bad of everything, because there will be unintended consequences. That much is certain. It gets to that known unknowns. Uh, you know, we know there's going to be unintended consequences. So we ask all the questions. Mayor, I, you're always uh, doing that of asking, well, wait a second, have we thought about this? And and then I think also the other piece, too, is, you know, at the end of the day, we're voting yay or nay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but your feelings are a mix of yay and nay. It's it's yes and no. You could be 51, 49, or you could be 100%, oh, I, I 0%. Think that's important. Because yeah. you can only vote 100% either <laughs> yes or no. Yeah. But I may be, you know, down there around 58%. I'm comfortable with it yep. and 42% I'm not. And I just have to decide, okay, is that 42% not comfortable? Is that enough then to make me vote no? Mm -hmm. Or the fact that it's 58% um, yeah. or whatever it might be, you know, sometimes it's easy, 100% in favor yep. of it, okay? But you're right, those those unintended consequences, you know, are yeah. are impactful. And they're there, regard, yeah. whether we look at them or not, yeah. they're yeah. there. And that's one of the critical pieces about making sure we as a council and a city incorporate mm -hmm. equity, because at least we're ensuring that those mm -hmm. unintended consequences are not disproportionately yeah. impacting our most marginalized communities. You know, a couple other quick things, you know, for the cup for the, the public to know, you know, one is and I'll go back to the pandemic, you know, our well, here's what I want the folks to know. Our staff is amazing and yes. incredible. And, you know, and we are, you know, recognized nationally for our quality of life. But we're also recognized for within departments, you know, for the work they do. And when we as a city were responding to a global pandemic on a local level, we were also doing everything else that they were expected to do. OK, we still had to do all of the water. We still had to mm -hmm. do all the first responders. We still had to do the planning. We still had to do the community engagement. We still had to do payroll and finance. Everything continued to be done. And, and, you know, again, that's just hard work. You know, our libraries did a great job. You know, our parks did a great job. job. I mean, every single department, Absolutely. you know, and, it, and, and I don't mean to leave anybody out. Um, you know, the other thing is one of our former city managers would say cities are forever. Yeah. And I want the public to remember that, that mm -hmm. cities are forever. And that's why we need to make sure that we are growing a tax base. That's why we need to make sure that we're providing houses, that we're providing job opportunities, that we are focused on, you know, some degree of economic growth so that we continue to be viable because, you know, there's 241 cities throughout Oregon and they're not all growing. And that's not always. And well, frankly, it's not a healthy thing. You just can't always stay stagnant, you know, at the same population level, um, with the same revenue level, with the same everything and expect, you know, to continue to be a thriving 
healthy city, regardless of your of your yeah. population. I, that, that phrase has very literally always yeah. resonated yeah. with yeah. me as well. And it's one where uh, not to throw any other cities under the bus, but I do say to people like you can look around mm -hmm. the, the, the country and mm -hmm. see very clear yep. examples of people who did not act like their city is there forever. Right. And, and it shows now. And it's yeah. a bummer for those people who live there. Uh, uh, one recollection I have is uh, early, I think, in both of our tenures, we went back to the conference uh, for the city's conference, and we participated on a panel of you know s cities of our size, uh -huh. and they went around the room talking about their challenges and their problems and their you know and that kind of. And <laughs> Anthony and I go, we don't have any of those. That's not <laughs> we don't. We don't have. Yeah, that. yeah I, I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> but you know it. It's, it, it's really striking yeah. when, when you interact with other city leaders and understand how far. I, another anecdote was um, uh, uh, our municipal fiber. Yeah. You know, others, I, I participated in a round table about that and I, I, I went, well, we have municipal fiber. And they, you what? You know, yeah. I mean, it's just like, how did you how, how did you do that? What did you, I, that's I mean, so it, it's really interesting when you yeah. contrast where we are oh, as a city with where we could be mm -hmm. uh, if we were someplace else in the country. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is, I know we're longer. Yeah, we're yeah long. I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, but it, it, Fun. Yeah. it's <laughs> keeping my attention. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else. So real quick, what's next? Oh gosh, um, work for me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm now working at a high school. Yeah. And so now I've been able to see the babies grow from K through 12. And, yeah. Having participated in my first graduation last year, it really was a moment because, yeah. you know, I've been there for the moments in yeah. kindergarten and picture day when I'm making sure the ponytails are straight for that. And now I get to participate and make sure their cap and gown is straight. Nice. And so I'm really looking forward into becoming more involved with issues and needs mm -hmm. for those age groups, nice. for sure, because there, there is quite a shift, which um, I'm passionate about. Good. So work for me. Yeah. That's awesome. Anthony. I, I know for me that it's going to be here and it's going to be in service to the community. Yeah. I don't exactly know how. I would love the opportunity to serve as an elected official mm -hmm. again. If I ever get the opportunity, it'd be amazing, be it at the city, at mm -hmm. the county. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the reality is, you know, I think... Uh, it's it's trite and it's tiny, but I, I love volunteering and yeah. serving our community. Yeah. I love Hills Doer Day. Yeah. I love going <laughs> to make sure that people are heard. I love sharing my own perspective. Yeah. So yeah. I, uh, I'm i not sure, but I know it'll be here. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Great. Well, I'm the senior member of this cohort, and um, so I'm closer to retirement, I think, than anybody else here. Um, and I do have businesses to run and uh, responsibilities there that continue. And I'm very proud of how uh, my businesses and our development and mm -hmm. uh, those things. And I'll pay attention to those because I do think we serve the city in mm -hmm. delivering those. Um, but I will look forward to spending more time with grandchildren, mm -hmm. uh, family. Um, we have a home on the coast that I love. And so we'll spend more time there. So um, I don't think... Um, other elective offices are in my future, yeah. but I will stay engaged with the city. Yeah. I will uh, volunteer. I will uh, support uh, phil phil philanthropy is kind of in our future. So um, those things. It's in your present. Yeah, they're my present. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I think for 14 years, I have not been able to go to Tuesday night markets. So I'm looking forward to Tuesday night <laughs> yes. markets. You know? yes. First Tuesday. And our, yes. Yeah. First Tuesday. Our yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We get our Tuesdays back. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking, you know, yeah. forward to that. I'm we'll looking forward. by the windows. As <laughs> as I know. As making as faces. As yes. As yeah. I'm with you on that. Yeah. And, um, you know, looking, looking forward to, you know, more time, you know, with yeah. family and, um, yeah. And, and, and I think, you know, holding, holding up and supporting those who are, sure. you know, serving us now. I think those are the, those are the things. So, yeah. Okay. All right. We ready for some lightning round questions. Oh, oh, All right. Here right. we go. Okay. All right. So ready. We'll start with favorite park, Gina. Parque del Indio. Okay. 
<laughs> Where is that? She oh, is it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> there we go. I love that. People talk like that. <laughs> For me, it's Turner Creek Park. It's my closest park, and yeah. I helped build the playground there, and I yes. love that. Kaboom. Yep, kaboom. Yes. That was yes. great. That was. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. I, the inclusive playground oh, is just such an amazing, a amazing okay. park, yeah. and uh, regionally. Yeah. I mean, it's not just for. Oh, I feel it's, it's my daughter's favorite. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I know that I should just give a quick answer, but I can't. You know, because there's so many that I love. But so Orenco Woods, Orenco Woods, you know, is I love Slow Orenco Woods yeah. because I was on Planning Commission when oh. hundreds and hundreds of homes, you know, were brought to the Planning Commission, you know, for approval, and you know, and we. You know, it met the requirements. You know, you cannot respond to these issues, you know, with your heart instead of your head, you know? So all of those are approved, but then, you know, the bottom fell out in the city with Metro, Trust for Public Lands, you know, um, your Bonnie Kukin, who's just, who's no longer with us, but the Queen of Orenco, you know, was a part of that. And, you know, so, so I, I love Orenco Woods because of what it might have been, but what it is. And so, you got to cut the ribbon on that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, we did the groundbreaking. Yeah, yeah. Well, Bonnie was next nice. to me for the groundbreaking. We did really all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, favorite community event, Rick? Oh, air show. Okay. Um, I'm so involved with that for yeah. so many years and brought it, helped bring it out to Hillsborough yeah. after Rose Festival. So it's still my favorite event. Nice. nice. So for me, the first one is the Verbort Sausage Festival. I know that's not Hillsboro specific. <laughs> well, so. there are some folks who think we're going to annex it, so but we're not. We're not. We're not. Oh wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> but I, I love the Verbort Sausage Festival. Yes. But in terms of the city, I really, genuinely, Hills Doer Day yeah. is one of my favorite. Um, this year, picking up litter with my daughter, yeah. and then having someone actually come up to her yeah. and say thank you so much. Oh. It was such a great push. Nice. She's five. Yeah. She's yeah. still yeah. trying to learn what that Impression. civic engagement means. Yeah. Seeing someone after after picking up trash and being like, oh, I did do a good yeah. job. It's nice. amazing. Well, and you grew up in Banks. I did indeed. You know, and so, yeah, so you know, that verbort connection there. Yeah. yeah, we'll give that to you. We'll it's give midway through. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, farmer's market. I yeah. raised my boys oh, yeah. at the farmer's nice. market yeah. walking from our house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. You know, I love our Christmas tree lighting. Oh, I, that's a, that's I a, that's am a, just <laughs> amazed at how many people show up. Oh, and I'm and, and it's a tie. Because the other one is our Pride Festival. You know, as the first government sponsored, city sponsored Pride Festival, you know, in in the area, you know, because others are community group yeah. supported. And I'm very proud, you know, again, you yeah. talk about our, our city putting, you know, council values, you know, our strategic plan, you know, staff values and, and equity. Welcoming. Man, inclusion. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm really proud of our Pride Festival. Okay, um, favorite food? Anthony, we'll start with you. Reward Sausage Festival. Oh. <laughs> okay. I love the Reward Sausage Festival, but burritos just all from? love them. From? Well, I'll get there. Okay. I'll get to that. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. That one is next. Yeah. Okay. So let's do favorite food and favorite restaurant. We can do it together. I love um, my burritos, particularly love peppers. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh. Good. Good. Oh, okay. Well, boy, I'm a restaurateur, so yes, you I, are. I should be picking my. <laughs> I, I should be picking my restaurant, but I'll. Aside from yeah, that, but you can um, give a shout out to. Well, no, I Reedville Cafe. Okay, course, Reedville but, Cafe. Um, yes. But um, we've enjoyed the newer restaurants, including High Ground mm. and oh, yeah, yeah, and Backwoods Brewing, mm -hmm. and some of the ones that actually the city was sort of responsible yeah. for recruiting. But as well, we have the Shun. Um, yeah, so Ichabon, good. It's so good. Yeah. I mean, just. Uh, one of our only Zagat restaurants. So yeah. um, uh, there's there and and of course uh, uh, the Mexican food is amazing. Yeah. So yeah. So anything I don't have to pay for. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Um, nice. As far as restaurant, not gonna lie, uh, time and time again, uh, one of our comfort places is the teriyaki place right be, right by our house over by the Burgerville on Cornell and Twenty Fifth. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. That that. No is, matter where yeah. I've been, because I've worked in Portland, everyone was like, "Oh, there's a great teriyaki place." So I go, I'm like, mm, "Yeah, no, this is not <laughs> yeah. as good as the one by my house." So, well, and now yes. we have all those food carts. Well, see, and that's yeah. what I was, I was gonna say. I love our food carts, yeah. you know, because they're, you know, depending on the mood. Sometimes I don't know what I want <laughs> until I get there. I love Abu Rashid. On Main oh, Street, good, yeah. um, Briani Express, you know, which is over in the, you know, Everglen, Tanisbor, new restaurant, so good. Okay. Um, so okay, next question is, I'm hungry. I, I know, <laughs> and, and you know, so the favorite food is pretty much whatever yeah. is in front of me. Yeah. Um, so, okay, the latest, not most recent, but the latest city council meeting that you can recall. Uh, 
So I, I was saying before this, I, I did do some research. I'm fairly <laughs> confident we had a meeting that went until 2.30. Th that's actually what I was going to say. Yeah, I'm yeah. fairly confident because it wasn't quite it three. Was so late. But it was so late. It was tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, it was I, literally tomorrow. I remember a planning commission meeting I was on. It went till 2.37. Yeah. And we had, we couldn't continue, we couldn't do any continuations because things that had to be done within 120 days or within 60 days. And so we just had it to keep yeah. going. And um, so um, I remember that for being after 2.30. Yeah. I don't remember. I know for yeah. sure we've hit the two o'clock hour. Yep. Okay. I know yeah. I know we've hit the two o'clock hour because we've for sure had we've had a handful of ones yeah. that ended at one a.m. One. Yeah. So yeah. So I huh. text my kids. We're almost done. Nope. Never. Mind. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not done. Not done. Yeah. We're almost yeah. done. Yeah. 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 Fatal flaw. For, for those future counselors, be aware of this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you might be staying up pretty late. And I remember, you know, following you know because Beach was on her scooter. Yeah. You know, and just. Following her home, home. Most of the way, <laughs> just because it was so, so late, late. Yeah. and um, yeah. not the street lights were out. Driving yeah. that time of night, you know, is uh, oh, you yeah. know is in the condition that you should be. So um, yeah, um, okay. And Anthony, you did some research also about yeah. our biggest packet. I know this one for okay. us three. Yeah. For you, I'm not quite as sure, but I know for us, it was in early 2017. Yeah. It was for the South Hillsboro yeah. infrastructure, PUD, yeah. and many other things. And it was 3,300 pages. I checked. It was four parts that we had to download, yeah. and I did the math. 3,300. Wow. Yeah. That's wow. Uh, crazy. I don't think and I read all 3,300. <laughs> I was going to say, Anthony, how many of those 3,300? Yeah, i got to imagine. I read most I'll of them. I'll bet you did. Without was, a doubt. Without a doubt, Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Favorite part of a council meeting? Oh, boy. That's hard. This was easy for me in that I was voting, making the choices, mm. making, uh, the, you know, uh, doing uh, doing the thing we're here to do. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed some of the proclamations because yeah, um, they... Uh, they gave us a chance to sort of recognize yeah. and, and, and engage certain parts of our community that, yeah. um, you know, um, maybe don't get all that yeah. much recognition yeah. or that sort of thing. Yeah. But I mean, I, I enjoyed the whole thing, but um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to say when we gather right before mm. and they last minute feed us yeah. to, to make sure we make it through the night, yeah. <laughs> just having that moment to sit down with everyone saying mm -hmm. hello mm -hmm. and Nice. You know, because usually why that meeting's over, it's late and we, mm -hmm. we need to head home. So for me, it was just having that snack mm -hmm. or dinner right before the council meetings and seeing everybody and mm -hmm. reconnecting because it's not mm -hmm. that often. You know, and I, I love the presentations, you know, yeah, where we, we, yeah, well, and especially with the public, you know, for, you know, like the art. For, for the historical, you know, the things. You know, one would have heart come over and act mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. You know, one would have kids come and sing. Um, you know, the I, nonprofits yes, presenting. Oh, giving the so checks. Amazing. I mean, and I loved when we would give um, city pins, you know, for, for 25 service, years, 20 right. years. I, I love those. And, you know, I will, you know, if I, this is not on the question and we're not gonna <laughs> do a, a flash round with this, but, you know, in terms of regrets, I regret that we didn't get to be in our council chambers, you know, for oh, all eight years. 100%, I mean, yeah. I think out of my eight years as mayor, I probably was out of here for three and a half, yeah. you know, because That's we had, right, yeah. you know, pipes freeze. We had, you know, repairs that we couldn't do because of the supply chains. Yeah, yes, it was that's exactly all right. Yours. And, yeah. you know, and, and even the most recent, you know, swearing in was done, you know, virtually and or no, right. that was that was ours. That was we came and recorded. Yeah, that's but right. Then the and then it was played. Was virtually yeah. It was played. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, well, you know, thank you all very, very much. And, you know, I've heard, you know, Mike Scott, former superintendent, say, <laughs> you know, friendships, you know, are for a reason, for a season or forever. And I will tell you, your friendships, you know, may have started for a reason and a season, but they will continue forever, mm -hmm. as will your legacy. Yeah. So thank you so very, very much. Well, thank, thank you. you. And thank you all for joining us. Um, you know, whether this is, 
your um, third installment of watching, <laughs> or you know, if you're watching it from start to end. But thank you for, um, you know, thank you for walking down a little bit of memory lane with us. But thank you also for looking ahead and and towards the future for our amazing city. Um, your input, your presence makes a huge difference, not just with what you saw here, but also with what you do out in our community. So thank you all for being a part of truly a beloved community and one of the greatest places to live. Have a great day.